Welcome to a NAC Tech live stream. We are going to go ahead and do an advanced tutorial on how to take screenshots. Welcome to a NAC Tech live stream. Um, on this video, we're going to show the more advanced features on how to use Pulpox um, mod, the uh, a, a artwork supporter mod, and some of the other mods that are in the collection. If you look at the description of the video, you'll see um, a link to the collection as well as some of the code that I'm going to be using and um, some other helpful pages for you. So the first thing I do almost always is just spawn my own character and add the, um, the Zeus Game Master to him. Um, it's just a habit and more than anything else, um, but it is, uh, it's helpful to, if you need to go into Zeus mode for anything. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and set up a situation for a screenshot. Um, very similar to last time, we're just going to put down some units and we're going to use some of the more advanced features now. So, I'm going to go ahead and use the FIA for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and put an auto rifleman in. And we will quickly go into the Pulpox animation viewer. And I know the animation I'm looking for. Sorry if the background voice is a little loud. Um, the animation I'm looking for um, is with a specific name, and it is pasted in the description. Um, and it's a death animation, basically. So what we'll do is search for that. And there it is. We're going to copy that escape out of the viewer and then we're going to control E to paste it onto him. Okay, so um, the Pulpox um, artwork supporter allows me to see the whole animation in Eden, whereas normally if I just add a switch move to the INI, I wouldn't see it until I actually played the game. So it is very nice to be able to see that here. But I don't want the full animation. I actually want it to stop at a very specific time in the animation because I'm doing screenshots, not videos. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it after a half a second. So we'll change this point, uh, negative one to a 0.5 and go ahead and say, okay. And you'll see that he stops at a given point. And that's what I want. I want to rotate him just a little bit. Now, what we want to do is add some blood like you just got shot and there's a bunch of ways that you can do this so I'm going to show you one way um, and then also a second way in just a moment so what I'm going to do here I know I'm looking for a specific arrow and it's um, in the signs helpers so I just search for help up here um, any of these will do. Um, what's nice about putting it on an arrow is that you can easily set the direction so you know that the uh, animation or the effect is going to happen in that direction. So the easiest thing to do real quick is to place it on the ground and then using the Alt key, drag it up to the height that you want. And I want this blood to be in his chest. Um, what we're going to use is another function of the um, Pulpox's artwork supporter. Um, he's got a few different functions available and the website is in there in the description of the video. Um, but it is this effects dropper and you can see a bunch of names of effects. Um, there's actually additional effects that you can get in different places, but what we're going to use is blood and blood mist, and we're going to put it onto that arrow. And so the code is also in the description of the video, but we'll go back here and we'll go on to the init of that and put that function. So this blood, blood mist, call the effects dropper. Say OK. Now, you won't see it live in the Eden editor, but once we play it in single player, we will see it. Um, before we go ahead and preview it, let's go ahead and add one more guy into our scene real quick. 
a single person in the scene is going to be kind of boring. So we'll clear our search. We'll go again to FIA. We'll pick a different type of man. We'll pick a rifleman. We'll just put him in the background a little bit. And obviously him just standing here is not of a lot of interest. So what we want to do is make sure that he's shooting. And to do that, what we're going to do is go into the Polpox animation viewer. There is an animation viewer built into um, Eden Editor, and you can do it here. It's just a little bit complicated. Um, let me show it to you real quick. Okay, so this is uh, the animation viewer of Arma. First, you pick the unit type you want. Um, and we'll just pick one at random and it switches it. Then you need to pick the type of animation, whether it's moving, cutscene, death, injury. You got lots of options. Again, whether they're prone or falling or stopping or running, there's all these settings you have to choose from. Um, then there's a, another whole category of unknown. And these are generally going to be the um, the add-ons um, are going to be under unknown. So all of those mods that you've downloaded that are part of the collection. So if you wanted this particular death animation, you could copy it from here and paste it in. Um, and there are a lot of them. Some of them don't do anything. And some of them are buggy. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, but this is very similar to the one we're using here. Um, there are a lot of them and you can choose whatever is appropriate for yours. So if you want them shot in the head, that's more appropriate. Notice these ones do nothing. This one he's falling forward, falling down. See, some of them are buggy. You notice the uh, weird long hands. It's just a buggy animation, so it's obviously not one you'd want to use. But again, we're not going to use the animation viewer. We're going to use the pull box one which is control E and this time because it's a shooting animation I want I'm just gonna search for shooting and I want this um, I want him standing nope not prone standing there we go we'll go ahead and control C that animation escape out control E to paste it onto the guy and then I also want to make sure that he's shooting constantly and another one of the pull box functions is to make sure that a unit is shooting again the code is in the description of the video it's a little bit slow to go into the items because of all the mods that are running but this function here will make sure he fires a weapon we're applying it to this and you can get the variables uh, or whatever the parameters for the function from the documentation on the Pulpox website. So we'll go ahead and say OK on that. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and preview the animation. So we're going to start it single player. And as soon as it launches, we're going to go ahead and enter into the camera mode, which is also modded by Pulpox. show you some of the additional features of the Pulpox mod once we get into the animation here. So hit escape, go into camera, and you can hear our guys shoot just a little bit over there. We're going to go to try to find the location I put them. There they are. And there you can see the blood and the mist coming out of the guy's chest. And he has fired, but right now he's not firing. You can't see that he's firing. So what we're going to do is just accelerate the time slightly. And then we're going to actually stop it when we, when we have that gun flare that we want. So as soon as he shoots, there we go. And now it's stopped right at that point. So at this point, I could go ahead and take my screenshot if I want it. Hit the backspace key and you've got a perfect screen for a screenshot.
This error message down here is just related to curator. If I actually back out of here, close blended, let it disappear real quick. You can hear the guy firing again. Go back into camera mode. That fire function will continue to fire. He won't run out of ammo. Um, the bullets actually disappear, so if I had a blue force standing right in front of him, um, that's what that zero is at the end of that fire command, is to say the bullets disappear. So again, he's not firing currently, so we want to go ahead and accelerate the time. Whoops, not that fast. And as soon as he shoots, set it to zero. That's nice. We got the shell in the air. We got the flare on the gun. He's falling. Again, backspace, make everything disappear, and take our screenshot. Again, I use ShareX. It's an excellent free tool that you can get on Steam Workshop. Whoops. When I tab out, sometimes it uh, holds the alt key. Let me go ahead and capture this so I can paste it into the, the video so you guys can see what it looks like. So that is quick and dirty, some of the more advanced features. Um, I'm also now going to show you, that's ShareX telling me that it's posted on Imager and ready to look at. Um, okay, now I'm going to go and show you one other feature you can do with this and then add some of the features to the other mods. Um, the other option I like with the um, pull box is some of these effects that you can add to the camera. So for example, if I want dirty vignette, you can see that there's this vignette around the edge. It's a little rough, a little bit more gritty looking. Makes for a nice screenshot. You could, whoops, not zoom in that far. You could zoom in really far and get a nice, dirty, gritty kind of look. That looks really nice for a screenshot. Let's go ahead and capture that one too. So in ShareX, go to Capture, Window, and pick my armor window. Captures it because I already just took a screenshot. It does it based on the time or by date. Um, so I'm going to say just generate a unique name for me. And it will upload it to Imager for me. I'm going to keep remembering to hit escape when I come out. Um, when you're in Splendid Camera, you can just left click or open the map, left click where you want to jump, and it takes you straight there. Holding shift key makes you, your camera move quicker. And then alt shift, I believe, is super fast. Um, some of the other features are, again, additional types of overlays, cinema borders, um, chroma aberration, so a whole bunch of different effects. Another thing you can do is if you want the rule of thirds, so the rule of thirds says you don't put anything dead center really, but you put it onto the third of the screen right here, and the second one is on the third. You notice I pretty much balanced it to the rule of thirds automatically. It just tends to look best to the eye. So don't place your objects right in the middle. Place them on those third lines and you will get better compositions out of your images. There's other ones here, golden triangles. Again, you want your action basically at the peaks of those triangles. Um, at this maybe another item here would balance it out really well. Um, so you got some items here that help you place objects. This says main object here, secondary object here, third object down here, fourth here, so forth and so on. That gives you the best composition of an image. And the kind of the way I had it naturally, what looked good to my eye, matches that golden ratio. And we can turn that back off again. A couple of the other features. Um, if, for example, you wanted more overcast, we're going to do a plane shot in a second here. Um, you can instantly add overcast to the sky, and that's good for your plane shots and whatnot. You can also change the time of day. Obviously, that's a little hard to see. So we're going to put it back closer to noon. 
You can also adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation. The aperture and focus doesn't seem to do a lot. So for example, I'm gonna set the focus to 35 millimeter camera. Um, so actually we're gonna set the focus to objects that are right at the camera set the aperture to a realistic aperture and it should start to make the background items go out of focus and it doesn't really seem to do that it seems to just lose the color um, so i don't know that focus does a whole lot i don't see a lot of change when i adjust it um, it could be that i'm not unpausing it but even when i unpause it it doesn't seem to change a lot so I generally leave the focus on auto, aperture on auto. Um, I do adjust the brightness and contrast sometimes, um, and that can make better pictures. So for example, if you want to make that hallway look dark and kind of forbidden, then setting the contrast down just a little bit does that a little bit more. So keep those in mind. We're going to go ahead and return to the editor and we're going to add a couple more objects in. This time we're going to do a plain scene. And so we're going to just leave these here. We don't really care about them. We're going to head over here. And what I'm going to do is spawn an A164. So NATO planes, A164. I'm going to have it like it's shooting at oh, something over there. And then what I'm going to do is before I lift it into the air, I'm going to go ahead and place a simple object spawner from, again, pull box. So other, other, simple object placer. This is another way to place things similar to that arrow that I put in. Um, this makes it a little bit easier for certain things. So keep this in mind as another option. I'm going to be making this plane actually launch a macer. So about 15, 20 meters in front of the plane, I'm going to put my optic spawner. And then I'm going to put the class name of a macer. And in the help files I've given in the description, I've given you a link to a page that is the name of all the different ammo for Arma. And one of those things, if you scroll down towards the bottom, it does give you the names of different missiles and whatnot. So for example, if you wanted an AA missile, you could, this would be the class name. And in my case, we're going to use a Macer, like I said. And I know the class name from this list for the Macer is uh, missile underscore AGM underscore zero two underscore F. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over here, paste that in, and then say OK. And you'll notice the Macer. We're going to angle it the right angle for us. So it's pointing forward. But if I bring this up off the ground a little bit, you notice it doesn't have any smoke. It doesn't have any jet flaming out like it just launched. So one of the other features of the pull box and the simple animation opt simple optic placer is to get all the animations that are capable with a particular object. So I'm going to check this box and say OK. Now it's copied all of the animations that are possible into the clipboard. I go back in. I remove that and I paste them all in. Now these are all the animations available. I don't want all the animations to run at once because obviously some of them will um, counterdict or counteract another one. For example, hide flame and unhide flame, kind of obviously that they would undo each other. So I'm just going to delete all but the one I want. And in this case, I want the unhide fire. Any of them would actually work, but I'm going to pick on the height fire too. If you pass your cursor over the object animation, it tells you that you need the animation name and an animation value in numbers. Now, my understanding is this is the number of those objects that are going to spawn. So I'm going to put comma one 
and then that should be it. Say OK, and there we go. We've got a plume coming off, a flame coming off the back of the maser like it's headed for something. Now, obviously, when I lift, the reason why I put them both down on the ground at the same time and didn't drink, bring them into the air is for placement. It's much easier to place it when it's on the ground than when it's in the air. So now what I'm going to do is select both of them and then drag them into the air. All right, so obviously, if our jet's in the air, we don't want its landing gear down. So there is something that we can put into the init line to make sure that the landing gear is up. And again, that code is pasted into the description of the video. But this is the code here. This, meaning this object, engine on is true. And then player action, landing gear up, this. So it's going to make it as if the player ran the action, landing gear up. And we'll go ahead and say OK. It does not get seen right now, but it will see when we launch the, um, the mission inside the single player. So a couple things I want to change is this angle doesn't look like it's really approaching to shoot something on the ground. And we're a little low, but there's a reason. It's just for composition reasons that we're so low to the ground. But the angle's not real good. So what we're going to do is just change the angle a little bit, make it tilted, maybe 25 degrees, and point it down by 10 degrees. So that's a little bit good, but now our maser is off angle. We don't care about rotating the maser, but we do care about pointing it down at the same angle. And there we go. Now they're both pointed down at that same angle. So from a composition standpoint, that's starting to look real good. If we ran this right now, this jet would fall to the ground. The arm of physics would take over and it would crash. So what we need to do is go back into it under special states and enable simulation. We're going to turn that off. Say OK. And now we're ready to go. What we want to do is give this a target. Um, we can make it and it as interesting as you want, but we're going to make it pretty simple at this point. We're just going to put a fuel truck. Now let's make it a let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's put an APC, a BTR-60 down here. Whoops. Um, I don't care about the crew because I actually don't want it to move. Don't want anything to happen with it. So I'm just going to place it down. Um, and then I'm even though there's nobody in it, I'm going to turn off simulation as well. Um, you can do other things with it. Um, right click. And it's a little slow having all the mods loaded to right click or double click on an object to change its config. So you just have to be patient. And edit vehicle appearance. And you can pick the different paint colors. Let's go ahead and go with a simple green. Hopefully that'll be more visible. And even though I'm not going to take my screenshot in this mode, I want to just check placement of things. So I think I'm going to take my screenshot probably here from up behind it. And from that location, my vehicle wasn't even visible at all. So I'm just going to move it forward a little bit and get a better idea by hitting backspace. And you could take your screenshot from here, but your gear is down, your canopy's open. It's not really what we want. So what we're going to do is go ahead and um, run the whoops, run the mission in single player and immediately enter camera mode again. Actually, wait a second for the curator message on the bottom to go away. I'll hit escape. Camera mode. And you can see that our A-10 is floating up in the air. Or A-164 is floating. Our missiles there. Our targets there. 
so we would just position ourselves our gear is up our canopy is down but it's staying in air I did forget to do one thing I'm gonna go ahead and exit out and do it because uh, I want this to be a permanent screenshot so I'm gonna go back to the editor um, obviously with his default pylon set up like that he's already got three macers you can't have more than three so we're going to go ahead and double click on the object, go into pylon settings, and in this one we're going to set it to one macer. And now it looks like he's already shot one already, and this is the second one, so it's at least possible. So we'll go ahead and start single player again, and we'll take our screenshot. Uh, when this does start, I'm going to go ahead and show you a one last mod um, that's in the collection. Again, the link to the collection is in the description of the video. Um, I'm going to show you a mod called Recolor. Um, and it allows you to adjust the color post-processing of the Arma screen, um, which does give you a lot of control over what your screen looks like. So we go back into camera mode. I use my scroll wheel to quickly get where I'm going. Again, position myself. If you want an under shot, you could do that. That looks pretty good. Come over the top. That looks good. If you have concerns, again, use the golden ratio. Primary in this one. Secondary in this one. We really don't have anything. It probably would be better if maybe we had a Tigris here shooting at the A164 um, and maybe down here a squad moving around but this is just a quick tutorial so we'll make it quick um, turn that off uh, I didn't show you one other setting I did show the effects that you could put on with the vignetting um, this changes the strength of the effect so if you only want a little bit of vignette, you can turn it down. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we're just going to leave it basic, and then we're going to show the recolor. Now recolor is nice. Even in camera mode, they add the little icon so that we can open it. And from here, you can pick some default settings. And some of them are very nice. You can do brownish overlay, black and white photo. The Mediterranean has a... a a more vibrant green look or you can adjust things yourself so if you want to increase the contrast or decrease the contrast you're welcome to do that you can change the intensity of that the difference between them the blend color so in this case the blend color is more red which actually makes the green stand out you can change the alpha value so obviously if we turn the alpha all the way up the screen becomes all the way red so, depending on the, where you set that alpha value. So, if I turn it all the way down, we got super green. Once you find a setting that you like, you can save them. And then, that way you can import them in again or use them another time. You can import and export settings so that you can use them in-game with without recolor. Um, but it has a whole lot of options here where you can play with the look and feel. So you're welcome to play with those. See what you like. I'm going to go ahead and go back to Mediterranean. I do like the little bit of green intensity with uh, Tanoa. Um, if it's automatically set to preview, so it's previewing there. Um, once you're ready to take your capture, you can hit uh, backspace again to get rid of it and you can take your capture again i left waited for that to come up so i'm going to close the the camera wait for it to disappear and now go back into camera and we'll go and get our final screenshot here a um, couple other things to let you know you don't have to do everything in camera mode if you don't know the composition don't know what you want to put on the map um, you can do it in um, Zeus mode and if you do it in Zeus mode there is um, the backspace key gets rid of all of the um, the menus that are on the left and right but if you hit control shift 
backspace, it'll also get rid of the Zeus logo that's in the bottom corner. For some reason, I'm moving really slow. There we go. Now let's go ahead and position ourselves. You know, even shots like this where you're getting a good full view of it would be really nice. I do like kind of this um, one-third view so I get to see a good view of the um, armaments, but I also get a complete view of the aircraft. Um, we are hearing the wind because there's wind on the map right now. Um, if, I think if I turned down the overcast it would probably go away. Nope. Still getting it. Um, anytime you're doing shots of flight things in the air, having some clouds is obviously good. So, that's a decent screenshot. Clear that away, and let's capture it. Again, going into ShareX, Capture, Window, Arma Window, and there it is. That is the end of this video. I hope you guys uh, learned something and enjoyed it. Um, please submit any screenshots that you make. Um, we are looking to redo our website and we need lots of screenshots. Um, so if you guys can make screenshots for us and submit them to us in the forum. Um, anybody that submits a usable screenshot gets a tag in TeamSpeak. Um, Anybody that uh, also submits them, if we use them on the website, then we'll give you credit on the website on the picture. Thanks for watching, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe.